Now let's come to the trigeminal neuralgia. So it is defined as sudden, usually unilateral, severe, brief, stabbing, lancinating, paroxysmal, recurring pain in the distribution of one or more branches of the fifth cranial nerve. So here we came across few terms which are very important in the definition. First of all, it's sudden. It's sudden. And then it says that it is usually unilateral. Unilateral means only one side of the face is affected, either this side or this side. And lateral. And it's severe. Okay. And it's brief. Means the duration is short. And it's stabbing, as if someone is stabbing you. And it's lancinating. Lancinating means piercing. Lancinating. And it's paroxysmal. Means it occurs for short interval of time. And it's recurring. Recurring. Because it occurs again and again. And it is in the distribution of one or more branches of the fifth cranial nerve. So it could be either the V1 which is the ophthalmic or V2 or V3. So we studied that trigeminal neuralgia. It is a sudden, usually unilateral, severe, brief, stabbing, lancinating, paroxysmal, recurring, pain in the distribution of any of the three divisions of the trigeminal nerve. Now this trigeminal neuralgia it is also called as tick dorelex. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but this is what I'm capable of. So it was called a stick dorelex, which means painful jerking, because in this the patient will clutch the hand over his face. This is not a hand of a human at all. <laughs> okay. And there will be spasmodic contraction, spasmodic contraction of the facial muscle. Whoops contraction of the facial muscles during the attack so that is why it is called tick durelex because it means painful jerking like someone is giving you a jerk it is also called as Fothergill's disease Fothergill's disease because there was a man whose name was john Fothergill, and he published detailed description about the trigeminal nerve okay so trigeminal nerve is abbreviated as tn and I'll be saying TN from now. And it kind of seems like a tongue twister. So TN is easier. So let's stick to that. Okay. Now the question arises. Why does it occur? You know what? The cause of this disease is unknown. That means it is usually idiopathic. And when I was studying, I really liked the term idiopathic. Even now, I have a attachment with the term idiopathic because... Because I feel if they don't know, it's okay for me not to know as well. But jitne log utni baate, to there are many views that have been given from time to time regarding the etiology. So what it did, it just create confusion. So nothing is clear. So we say that it is idiopathic. However, we'll see few probable etiological conditions. So let's come to the etiology etiology so the first one is vascular factor vascular factor means related to blood vessels so there could be transient ischemia and autoimmune hypersensitivity responses that could cause the demyelination of nerve or or in layman's term it will injure the nerve and there could be mechanical factor mechanical factor for example, if this was a nerve and it was going very happily somewhere, but it is associated with the artery. Let's say this is the artery and somewhere in the middle, the artery has enlarged. Okay, so this is called aneurysm. So this aneurysm, it will compress the nerve. So the pressure of aneurysm will also affect the nerve. And there is one artery which is the superior cerebellar artery superior so this has been blamed for causing tn so the artery lies in contact with the sensory root of the trigeminal nerve so this artery lies 
in contact with the sensory root of trigeminal nerve and it has been blamed to cause TN. Other probable etiological factors could be infections, multiple sclerosis, uh, petrous rich compression, post-traumatic neuralgia means because of trauma and it could also be because of intracranial tumors such as epidermoid tumors, meningiomas and there could be intracranial vascular abnormalities as already told and it could also be viral etiology so post herpetic neuralgia it is seen in elderly patients because of the varicella zoster virus so the patient will have a history of varicella zoster virus infection now a few general characteristics about it about the tn so it occurs in the late middle age or later in life means it occurs in fifth or sixth decade usually decade usually so if a patient comes to you and he is just 30 year old or 40 year old so as a clinician you should be alerted that it could be a possible intracranial space occupying lesion so your age gives you an idea if it's TN or it is any lesion that's causing the TN and it has female predilection predilection and generally V3 that is the mandibular nerve is more commonly involved then V2 is involved and the V1 is very rarely involved now let's come to the clinical features so the patient will come to you and he will say that when I touch my face in certain areas, I have a sharp shooting lancinating kind of pain. So these areas which he touches and it causes him pain, these areas are called as trigger zone. Trigger zones. So trigger zone is an area of the facial skin or the oral mucosa where low intensity mechanical stimulation, such as even if you touch the area lightly, or even if you give an ear puff or even if you touch the sight or even if you chew or speak or smile or brush that trigger zone will be activated and the patient will have the onset of pain so that is why such patients they do not brush the teeth for like weeks and the men don't shave their face because they have a fear that if they touch and the fear is justified too so they avoid touching their faces because we have the trigger zone that will cause the pain to begin and the pain is usually confined to one division of trigeminal nerve so it will be either v1 v2 or v3 which is involved and it is usually unilateral means only one side of the face will be involved either this side or this side it rarely crosses the midline and the tn it occurs in cycles means each cycle will last for weeks or month. For example, if the attack occurred today, then it will occur after a month. Then after some time, the attack will be each week and then the cycle appears closer and closer. So as the time passes from months, it will come to weeks and then to days. And with time, the pain also become more intense and unbearable. So this is a very, you know, agonizing condition. And in extreme phases, the patient will have a motionless face. So you will, when you see the patient, you will find that he has frozen or mask-like face. Frozen or mask-like face. So we had studied the area supplied by the divisions. So obviously, the trigger point for the V1 will be around the area of supply so it is usually over the supraorbital ridge for the v1 and for the v2 which is the maxillary the trigger points are located on the skin of the upper lip here teeth gums ala nasi or cheek or on the upper gums as well and for the v3 gums of the lower jaw and the teeth is involved tongue is rarely involved one more thing about this TN is that it does not occur in sleep. Does not occur in sleep. Now in the next video, we'll study about the diagnosis of TN and the management of TN. So I hope you found this video helpful.
Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. Share the video. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.